Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh, you know what this setup means, guys? It means a long, chatty video. So grab yourself a coffee, I've got a coffee, or a tea, or a drink, a beverage of some sort. I mean, you might not be watching this in the morning. Do you know what, guys? This is probably the earliest I filmed. It's 8 a.m. I've probably got a puffy face. I've just gotten ready. But I was, I'm, I'm very busy today, guys. And I was like, the only time I have to film a video today is 8 a.m. this morning. So here we are. It's 8.04. I'm a little bit late. But as you can probably tell from the juicy title, <laughs> I'm gonna be as honest as I possibly can with you guys, chatting about all things to do with my job on the internet. The questions I get asked probably the most, other than relationship questions, it is questions about, this is your job, how much money do you earn? How do you earn money? When did you start? How long does it take you to make a video? You can't wipe very much, what do you do? Da -da 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 -da. All these questions, and I thought, why not just have a video where I can chat about it so that next time someone leaves a comment like that, I or one of you guys can leave a comment saying he's made a video about this, go watch it. But I also get these questions in real life, guys. When I meet people, very few people actually go, cool, I know what that means. You're a YouTuber or you're a social media person. I get what that means. I know how you earn money. I know roughly how much you make and what it entails. Like, and you do work hard, so I get it. No, most of the time they're like, what? That's a job. You can't earn much money from that. Or the, the flip side of that is someone goes, you must earn millions. And I'm like, no. I thought it was worth doing a video about this. I'm gonna be as honest as I possibly can. I'll try and put timestamps in. So it, I know one of the questions is about, my watch just said there's motion at your front door because we have a camera. I can't see anything, no one's knocking. So let's just start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. I'm not like other YouTubers, I'm not gonna save the juiciest bit to the end. I know what the title of this video is gonna be, and I don't wanna make you wait ages until then. I mean, you probably can skip along the bottom if you want, but I'm gonna just get to the good bits because I know that there are lots of questions, but the question everyone wants to know is, how much money do you earn? But I can't start with that until I answer another question which I get, which is, how do you earn money? So in terms of YouTube, the way that you earn money is something called AdSense. So AdSense just means advertising revenue. I don't know why it's called AdSense, it's just what Google call it, because Google own YouTube, and I get paid by Google every month. So as you all know, as a YouTube viewer, unless you've paid for YouTube Premium where it gets rid of adverts, you will see adverts on all YouTube videos. They might be as small as a little banner while the YouTube video is playing, which you can click X and get rid of it if you want. It might be an advert in front of the video. When you first click on a video, an advert, and then that advert might make you watch the full 30 seconds, or there might be a skip ad after five seconds. It might be an advert in the middle of the video. It might be an advert at the end of the video. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but basically it's those adverts that pay YouTube and pay me. So firstly, when you join the YouTube Partner Program, which you need, I think it's a thousand subscribers, or when I did it anyway, it was a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So it's quite a lot, but once you pass that threshold, you're able to earn money through the YouTube Partner Program. And basically, it's the same contract for everyone. It's a 55-45 rev split. YouTube take 45% of everything that I earn, and I get 55%. Now that sounds like a lot. You're probably like, oh my gosh, that is a huge amount, but I don't see that 45%. So when I go on my dashboard and I can see how much money I've earned, I don't have to deduct 45% from that. Instead, what I do in my head is basically double the figure and go, oh, that's what it would have been. It would have been double, but YouTube have taken their 45%. But it doesn't feel like a big deal. Everyone's on the same playing field. You can't negotiate. That is just what it costs to make videos on the YouTube platform. By the way, if the lighting changes during this video, I'm doing it as the sun is rising. This is how early it is. So it's adverts on the videos. Basically, in simple terms, you don't earn money from subscribers. Subscribers is meaningless, really, in terms of how much money you earn. It's views. So how many people have seen those adverts that are on your video or playing before your video? Now, I don't know the answer whether you earn more from an advert if someone clicks it, as opposed to if someone watches it, or if someone watches the whole thing versus a little bit. I would imagine so, but I don't think YouTube are fully, fully, fully transparent with like what the rules are in terms of that. However, the way I understand it is the more views, the more money. Obviously, there's other ways to earn money as well. So like with brand deals, when I work with brands and get sponsorships and stuff, but I'll come on to that a bit later. So now that I've explained how you earn money, the advertising revenue, I guess I can get on to how much money do you earn then? And the honest answer is, I don't know. I will come on to some figures later in the video. I will give you some specifics. However, this initial answer is, I don't know how much I earn 
on a monthly basis because it changes every single month. And you also can't compare creators and go, well, that creator, let's say you did find out, somehow got a really accurate figure of like, well, that person has 100,000 subscribers and I know that they earn 10,000 pounds a month from AdSense. Therefore, that person's got 100,000 subscribers, so they must be earning the same amount. It doesn't work like that because A, as I said, it's not based off subscribers, it's based on views. But even if their views were the same, it wouldn't be the same amount of money because advertisers pay different amounts of money for their adverts to be shown on videos. For example, a bank will pay a lot more money for their adverts to be put on my channel or on a video about finances than a makeup brand will pay to put their videos on a video about makeup because there's more money in the banking world or you know there's there's less YouTubers that talk about finance that makes their channel appropriate for financial adverts because the YouTube algorithm this all happens behind the scenes I can't choose what adverts go on my channel I don't hand select them I've had people in the past go oh <gasps> there's a Republican advert on your channel, that must mean you're a Republican. I'm like, no, hun, that must mean you're a secret Republican. <laughs> or that the algorithm thinks that you're for turning, that you could change your vote. It's got nothing to do with me. I have no say on what adverts go on my videos. If I was to make a video titled, like with this one, this one will be titled something to do with finances, because I know that that gets clicks. There might be some financial type adverts that are on this video. And I will earn more from those adverts than I will earn from a generic vlog where, you know, a coffee brand, maybe Starbucks adver advertises on the channel. I'll get less for that. So they call that CPM, which is stands for cost per mil. Mil meaning thousand, it doesn't mean million. And so you could get anywhere from like $1 per thousand views all the way up to like $30 per thousand views. And actually, as I'll show you, the most I think I've ever had is $120 Per thousand views, which is insane. And when I told people about that and showed my business coach, she was like, I have never in my life seen a CPM that high, which is mad. And we will come on to the reasons why for that. And I'll give you the money figures of that as well. But yeah, so I can't give an accurate description. So one month could be a really good month. The next is down. The next is up. The next is down. It's not predictable at all. Also, it depends on the audience type, where they're located. So if my viewers are mainly in the Western world, which they happen to be, I will learn more from those adverts because advertisers see westernized viewers as having more disposable income. So they're happily put more money behind it because they want us Westerners to spend, 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 spend. It depends on the country. For example, having more American viewers is more beneficial financially than having more UK viewers because, again, they view Americans as having more money than Brits. Therefore, advertisers will pay more money to be seen by Americans because they want American customers than they will by Brits. So I actually, I don't have full specifics on this number, but for example, I, I might earn $10 per thousand views for Americans, but I might only earn $6 per thousand views if they're Brits. I can find this in my analytics deep, deep down. <laughs> However, I don't often look at it because it doesn't really interest me that much. I don't really care. I don't design my content around crafting a good CPM. I basically just want to make sure that the people that watch my videos enjoy it and that every month there's new people joining. That's what I want to do. Anyway, this is going to be a long video. I can feel it. My highest earning video, guys. Now, no one actually ever asks about what my highest earning video is. I just wanted to chuck this in there because it goes to show how you just can't predict based on views, how much money a video is gonna make because my highest earning video is not my most viewed video. My highest earning video is this one. It's where I tested out Huel products. This was a couple of years ago now. Titled, I only drank Huel for a week and this is what happened. Now this video has 233,000 views and it's not actually my most viewed video. I think it's like my third or fourth most viewed video. As you can see from the screenshot, 5,700 pounds and 61 pence from one video. How? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So this this is the video where, as I said to you, the CPM got up to like 120. Oh, I can't find it now. Oh, it's even more than I expected. So this graph of all the squiggly lines represents a day. And each day, there is a new value added to the adverts on my channel. So that is why this just shows you why I cannot tell you how much I earn or cannot predict how much I'm gonna earn because at its peak, what I'm showing you here, I earn 133 pounds 40 per thousand views on that day. But if we take one of the low points, let's take this one here, this one I earn 18 pounds 21 per thousand views, which is still a really high CPM. And at the bottom, we can see here that the average 
CPM is 39 pounds per thousand views. Now, the reason for this is it's a very specific video. And I think the reason is Huel were like, oh, it's a video about us. We want to advertise on it. Competitors for Huel were like, well, we want to put spend behind this. Let's put one of our adverts in front of this Huel video and try and get customers away and steal them from Huel. But then Huel probably are like, no, because they basically bid for for space. So I think they basically, Huel and other competitors get in bidding wars about who is going to advertise on my video. And that is why the CPM is so high, because that is insane. The highest earning niches on YouTube tend to be the finance area. Anything to do with property, investments, finance, they tend to have the highest, highest, highest CPMs, which is why you see loads of channels now doing finance, because everyone's like, well, I want to earn loads of money. To put that into perspective, let me take a fairly recent video. So this one here, Off Grid Cabin in the Woods with My Boyfriend, which did quite well. It's had 65,000 views. Let's see, even I don't know how much money this has earned. So, okay, that's quite good. So here I can see that I earned 376 pounds and 31 pence so far from that video. And I think the, the joy about YouTube is that all of these videos will just continue earning money. So it is a little bit like a passive income. Once I've made the video, the video that just goes on earning because people keep viewing it over time. And that I'd say is slightly higher probably than my average video because that had slightly more views. But as I said, it doesn't really work on views. Like you could have a video that has 20,000 views and earns more than a video that has 70,000 views because it's not really always about the views, it's about the CPM and what advertisers are willing to pay to be advertised on that specific video. It's very confusing. Finance chat done. Let's talk about what lots of people say is, okay, well, how long then does it take to make a video? And I know what people mean when they're asking this. They're trying to suss out like, okay, do you deserve it? <laughs> basically is what people are trying to figure out. So again, it's one of those annoying questions. I can't give you an honest answer because every video does take a different amount of time. A sit down video like this will take far longer for me to edit than an out and about vlog. And I don't know why, because when I import these files into my editing software, this is just one file. With the vlog, I'm importing about 30 files and then chopping them together. But for some reason, it's easier for me to do that than these sit down videos. I don't know why. I think it's because I mess up on these sit down videos a lot. When I'm on the fly vlogging, I don't make many mistakes and I kind of know what I want to shoot. I trim the start, trim the end of every clip and then stick it all together. And I might have a little edit, but on videos like this, I make loads of mistakes. I go back on myself. I redo lines. I like go over it again. I'll actually insert some little wasted clips or ums or ahs or repetition for you to see. Hey everyone. Mm. I am going to be trying to be very honest. I'm going to be, so yeah. Um, um, how long? Um, <sighs> um, So a video like this, I will already have been speaking for about 20 minutes. I will probably be speaking for another 20 minutes. So let's say that's 40 minutes in terms of setting up my tripod, my camera, everything. And that takes me to an hour to film this video. The bit of research beforehand, before doing this, coming up with the questions, going through, finding questions from you guys was probably about 30 minutes. So that's an hour and a half. And then in terms of editing this video, I mean, editor Joel can put it on the screen, but I would imagine this video would take like two, two and a half hours. So what, that's this, let's say it's two hours. That's like three and a half hours for this video. But then I've got to upload it. I've got to design a thumbnail, come up with the title, do all the description, the tags, make sure it's all ready to go. I'd say that takes me another hour. So yeah, four and a half to five hours per video, I think would be normal. I do three videos a week. So that's 15 hours a week is on video creation. I know what you're going to say. That's amazing for 15 hours work and you could earn like potentially six grand for a video, one video. Well, firstly, that's the only video I've had that has been, you know, I've earned other videos in the four figures, but nothing as big as 5,700. And secondly, sadly, there is way more to it than that. <laughs> if I'm working with a brand, the branded video takes way longer. Obviously, I might have certain points, key points to hit, not a script because I don't work with brands that give out scripts because it doesn't work for me. It needs to be in my own voice, but they will say, can you hit this point, this point, this point, this is a bit of info about our company. So branded videos can take way, way, way longer for me to read through the brief, find a way to integrate it into a video, edit it. I send it to my manager who sends it to the brand. Well, actually it's probably even more convoluted than that. 
I send it to my manager, my manager sends it to an agency, the agency sends it to the brand, the brand sends it back with notes to the agency, the agency sends it back to my manager, my manager sends it back to me, I make the changes and it goes through this chain. So it can take a lot longer. Emails, luckily I have a manager who deals with all of my business inquiries, my rates, everything like that. But there are emails that I deal with, whether it's from viewers, whether it is from brands that want to gift me things, but they don't have a budget for full campaigns. Or some brands do email me directly about paid work and I have to then ferry them in the right direction to my manager. The main thing that takes up extra time is other platforms or you know YouTube Shorts, for example. TikTok, Instagram, coming up with content for that. I've been obsessed with Instagram and TikTok over the last few weeks and months, and I've grown massively on those platforms. So now I'm putting more time and attention into those platforms because lots of advertisers like to work with me over on there. So I'd say on the whole, I would say there's probably at least another 15 hours a week creating short form content for TikTok, for Instagram, the coming up with the ideas, the scripting, the filming, editing, posting online. That's not to mention other things like researching equipment, how to improve my content, What? how do I use this camera? This is a new camera, how do I use it to its best ability? Other things, obviously I have a podcast with Keegan and uh, that takes up a lot of time, like the shooting of the content. I don't edit it, nor does Keegan, we have an editor for them, but then proof watching the content, going back with notes if there are notes, then scheduling everything. The podcast, three clips from the podcast, about seven or eight YouTube shorts as well. And then I design all the thumbnails, get it all scheduled, let alone the filming, coming up with ideas, scripting, not scripting the podcast episodes because it is a chat, but coming up with the questions and the points that we're hitting. I also work with my business coach, Laura. So I pay her every six to eight weeks and we have a chat. I've been working with her for the last three years. She helps me to sort of come up with new content ideas and just basically is a sounding board because when you work alone, it's, you know, it's quite hard to come up with new ideas and to see how you're doing. So she'll go over all of my analytics and say, this is how you've done this month. Da, 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 da. I also have someone at YouTube who does that for me as well, which is very, very helpful. And then other projects. So I'm working on something at the minute. I'm doing some writing. I'm not really going to talk about it very much because it is early days, but it's taking up a lot of time and I'm very excited by it. I'm not getting paid for it. Obviously, if something comes from it, it'll be worth it and I'll be rewarded financially, but it might never come off. So then it's like I'm doing all this work for free. I'm under no illusion that I am the hardest working person out there. I'm, I know that there are people out there who work 70, 80 hour weeks, who are on their feet all day, every day. I, I feel like when I talk about this, people go, oh, you don't work hard. You think you're working hard at 40 hours a week and I'm doing this, this and this. And I'm like, no, I don't. I've not said that. I, I do work hard. I work way harder than people think because content creation and running your own business is a lot harder than most people expect. But I'm not going to sit here. I know some YouTubers do play it up to the camera and go, oh, I work 150 hours a week. And I'm like, no, you don't, hun. I know. I know you don't. I know you stay in bed until 10 a.m. I know all you do is go to events. You go to the opening of an envelope. Like, all you're there for is the free events, and that's not work. The events can be work, but they're not work all the time. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not, like, I am very lucky that I can earn what I earn for the amount of work that I do. However, it is stressful, the stress behind it of going, like, the reason I love it is because I don't have a boss. No one is saying to me, Joel, do this, do that, do that. I hate being told what to do. I'm glad that I can do what I like. However, that is the hard part as well. The fact that I don't have anyone giving me a kick up the ass when I need it is very difficult. The only person that loses if I don't work is me, which is nice but it's also the hard part because then you go, oh, I just need, and also I've got no one to go to for a pay rise. <laughs> My version of a pay rise is getting more subscribers and earning more money, more clicks, more views, whatever. That is my version of a promotion of a pay rise because I can't go to YouTube and say, can you just pay me a little bit more, please? <laughs> the next question is, how do you get so confident talking to a camera and how are you relaxed around a camera and how do you have the confidence to vlog in public? Now this comes with time. Like my first YouTube videos when I started in 2013, I was so shy and so boring and I'd be sat here in front of the camera going. Um, yeah, so I think my favorite color is blue. And I now know that, you know, you have to be a bit entertaining. You have to talk with your hands a bit. You have to be a bit engaging, but that comes with time. I honestly now, I'm not scared of cameras at all. 
I feel like whilst I'm looking at a camera now, in my head, I know that I'm talking to my viewers. I'm talking to you guys who I feel like I know you and I know you feel like you know me too. And that's that's what I'm thinking about when I'm filming. So I don't really think that I'm filming for a camera. How do you get confident in public? I still get embarrassed but it's about pushing through that embarrassment and doing it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? I've had it all. People look, people stare, people start giggling and pointing. Maybe someone jumps in the background. Maybe someone shouts something. That's the worst that can happen. Then I'll power through it. Also, if that happens, it's entertainment for the vlog. Some of you guys point out when people are in the background doing things in my vlog and I'm like, you know what, it's funny. As long as you don't touch me, don't come near me. <laughs> Don't hit me or throw anything at me. It's fine. You can say what you want and, and mess around in the back of the camera, camera frame, the camera shot. I don't care. But it is hard. It is embarrassing. But the way I have to think about it is more people are going to be watching this video. Well, not this one because I'm in the privacy of my home. But let's say this one was out and about. More people are going to see this video on the internet than are going to see me walking down the street now. What I might pass like 50, 60 people who look at me and go, what's he doing filming himself? But then I post it online and it gets 10, 20,000 views. So I'm like, I'm doing it for my viewers. I'm doing it for my viewers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it just comes with time. I do get some people going, how do you find the time? And I suppose the, pe the people that ask this question don't realize that I do it full time. And that is the reason I do do it full time. And I think when people get annoyed at YouTubers or let's make it personal to me when people get annoyed at me for working with brands in sponsorship deals Which I haven't really spoken about but that is where you know the bulk of the money with with you know Earning a living on the internet is made that is when I say to people well If you're a troll if you don't like me and you're complaining about that That's one thing but if you're if you like me if you're like a fan of me and this channel then you should celebrate when I get a brand deal because it means that I'm earning money from doing YouTube and then I can continue to do YouTube. There are those moments going, well, if I don't earn money from doing this, I will have to get a full-time job. And if I get a full-time job, that's fine. I can do that. I've worked many full-time jobs before in the past. The issue is if I was to get a full-time job, I wouldn't be doing YouTube. I wouldn't be doing this extra 40 hours a week doing this. Like I wouldn't be doing three videos a week. I wouldn't even do one video a week. Probably I do one video a month. I just wouldn't have the time. So the question, how do you find the time? Sure, there are YouTubers out there who work a full-time job and run a channel. They say it's absolutely exhausting. I don't think I could do that. So the point being, if there are adverts, I know it can be annoying, but please rest assured, I only work with brands who either A, I really love and use, or B, I think you guys will really love and use. Or the sweet point is both. It's like, I love it. I think you will love it. They're the best. But I will never work with a brand that I think, ugh, I hate that. Like, I get some gaming brands, some like online mobile games where you hunt for treasure. They offer me lots of money to work with them. And I'm like, no, because I don't play games on my phone. You know, I don't know, mushrooms. I'm sure mushrooms aren't working with influencers, but if it was something mushroomy, I hate mushrooms. There's no way I'd ever accept a brand deal with anything that contained mushrooms. You guys know I hate it. However, the caveat with that, I suppose, like I said, would go, hang on, as long as I can be honest that I don't like it, if my viewers would like it, and if I believe in the product, I could sell it, do you know what I mean? But you know, you get you get asked all the time by like these skinny teas, where it's like, oh, if you drink this tea, it will make you drop loads of weight. I'm never gonna work with a brand like that because I don't believe in it. I don't use it myself, and I wouldn't want you guys to use it because it's not healthy, and I don't want to promote that or align my image with that. Because you also have to bear in mind that I am aligning my image, and I'm essentially potentially breaching your trust if I recommend a brand I do not believe in you guys buy it and then you have a bad experience. You don't just then don't like that brand. You would then go, well, I don't trust Joel now. I don't trust Joel. Joel recommended that and I hated it. So do you know what I mean? So I am very, very picky about the brands because the thing that means the most to me is my relationship with you. And brands do want to pay me to be in front of your eyeballs. And I'm very protective of that because I go, cool. I could take that money in a cash grab and go, cool. I'll take that and make the video for, for the brand. But then, okay, that's thinking very short term. Sure, I've got this this money, this bag of money. But then what happens when you guys go, oh, well, I don't trust Joe anymore. And actually I don't like him now because he's recommended that and that was really bad. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave. I'm, I'm not gonna watch his videos anymore. And then I'm left in the S H I T. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I am very picky about brands I work with. This is a very long tangent, but all to say, please rest assured that when I do work with the brand, it's because I genuinely believe in them, and I feel like that should be celebrated by you guys. If you do like me and you like my videos, because you should go, yeah. Go, go Joel, because now you can keep on making free videos. Talking of free videos, I know people are like, what about channel memberships? With channel memberships, YouTube take 30%. So I have three tiers. There's the supporting tier, which is 99 cents, which you get badges next to your name. The VIP tier is 3.99 a month and you get members only exclusive videos every single month, usually two or three. Then the health is wealth tier is $8.99 a month. You get everything the other tiers get plus one health-based video a month. So with that revenue, with the members, I think in total I've got about 800 members on this channel. Yeah, YouTube will take 30% of that. But that's why memberships are really important to me as a creator because it's extra income for me that is more predictable. You've seen those charts up and down, up and down. I can predict memberships a lot more, which is really helpful to go, okay, every month I have that income from that so I can plan a bit more. And it feels good because I'm offering you guys something in return. So the people that want memberships, it's like, it's not just, because there are websites, I've used them in the past and I actually still have like a coffee page where if you want to buy a creator a coffee, I think one coffee is three quid, but you can do it in multiples of three or something. I don't know. That's lovely. That's like a little tip where people tip me and go, oh, here's three quid, Joel, go get yourself a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. Or some people have been very generous. It's like, here's 30 pounds. It's, it's your birthday. Here's 30 dollars, 30 pounds. Pounds, go use it for this, that, the other. It doesn't have to be an actual coffee, but the concept is buying your buying your favorite internet personality a coffee. Do you know what I mean? And that's lovely and that's great, but I don't, I have this guilt about it of going, oh, someone's giving me this, this free gift, this free money. I just feel, I know I should view it as a tip for the work that I do, but yeah, it makes me feel a little bit uneasy. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, but I'm like, why are people so kind? However, with memberships, I know that I'm providing something in return. It, it feels really good. It feels like I'm a little shop. I'm a one-stop shop where it's like, oh, they're paying me this monthly fee, but I'm giving them something in return, something exclusive. So I really like that. And also some people go, why don't you have a Patreon? Just because I wanna keep it all in one place, it's easier for me. YouTube take 30%. I think it's more than what Patreon would take. But I, I like it all being under the YouTube umbrella rather than ferrying people to another website. But I've got friends that use Patreon. They swear by it. They absolutely love it. So each to their own. And I suppose one of the last questions is how do you come up with so many ideas for content on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram? I suppose YouTube is a bit easier in a way because of the type of videos I tend to do are vlogging videos. So... I just kind of live my life and I vlog it, which sounds really easy. It does sometimes, that's why I get burnout sometimes because I just go, I don't want to film this. I just want to live this moment offline. But then I go, oh, but if I filmed this, A, my viewers would love to see it and B, I could earn money from it. Do you know what I mean? Like I go on holiday soon, but is it going to be a true, true, true holiday? Well, no, because I'm going to film it. The reason I'm going to film it is actually... I'm going to be honest, it's not because I know you guys will like seeing it, it's because I go, oh, flights are expensive, hotels expensive, I need to earn the money back from that, and I can do that if I film it. So it, essentially it will even out and the holiday will be free, hopefully. <laughs> but again, like I said, you can't predict, who knows. So that is the downside when you do what I do. If you are someone that has a niche and you make very niche videos about gardening, about investments, about this, you can pre-film the videos and go on holiday. With me, I can pre-film videos, but it's kind of like what I do is film my life as I go. The hard part is TikTok and Instagram, which some people, I know some of you will go, well, I don't go on those platforms, I don't know. But that is an essential part of my job as a creator is embracing new platforms because then I can bring people in and bring them to YouTube because despite having more followers on other platforms, YouTube I view as my main thing. I view myself as a YouTuber. I've got nearly half a million followers on TikTok, but I will not say I'm a TikToker. I've got 200,000 followers on Instagram, but I'm not saying I'm an Instagrammer. I am a YouTuber, but I do those other platforms because A, they're fun, B, brands work with me on there, and C, because it brings people in that I can then push to YouTube. It is an essential part of what I do, and the ideas for TikTok and Instagram are very hard because 
what I do on there is more like comedy stuff. And I say comedy because m half the time I'm like, I don't even know if this is funny, <laughs> but people seem to like it. And yeah, basically anytime I get inspiration, I like take a photo of it or screenshot it or write it in my notes. So I do have a folder on my phone that says content inspiration. And so I'll dip in and out. Like the other day I wrote down on my phone, toilet seat. Obviously I had an idea at one stage about a piece of content to do with the toilet seat, but I've forgotten what it is. So note to future Joel, give yourself more information. Don't just write toilet seat because now I've forgotten what it is. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this video up now guys, because I think I've been talking for 45 minutes and I feel at the same time that I've said absolutely nothing, but I've said everything at the same time. But let me know down in the comments if you found that interesting, if there are any other questions, because I can always do these Q and A's. I love talking about YouTube. It's just my favorite thing. So I could talk for hours about it, but I'm not going to. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.